Hey guys, Happy New Year, and I thought it's time for an update on my Indy powered S15 project behind me here. Uh, I'm about to get my 3D Maker Pro scanner and 3D scan the motor so that I can bring a whole heap of scan data into Fusion 360 and start developing my suspension platform. So let's check it out. So let's get into the scanning process of this VK45 motor. A few details before we start is that um, scanners don't like any reflective surfaces, so anything that's too shiny uh, will need to be dulled down with some talcum powder or some special scanning spray. Um, lucky for me, there's no really shiny surfaces on this and all of the parts that I wanna scan are quite dull, which makes it easy for me. I don't have to coat the motor or do anything. I will take the motor out of the chassis jig and do a complete scan once I understand how this all works. So this is my first time using this scanner and the first time that I'll create a scan. Um, basically what I'm looking for, and this is what you wanna know before you start scanning, is what data do you require so that you can get a good focus on the areas that we need. Um, what I'm focusing on is basically the whole front motor plate surface and this is to um, tie this into the chassis via a, uh, a water jet cut aluminium plate that I'll have to draw up in CAD and I'll have to have this scan data to be able to miss all of the pulleys and the bits and pieces that are going on here and then I'll be able to design all of my suspension off that front motor plate. So the major points are all of the, um, the pickup points that would have bolted to the bulkhead of uh, an Indy car behind the driver's seat. And, um, and we'll be trying to get as much scan data of those as possible. And then we'll make sure that that data is correct uh, in Fusion 360 by double checking the measurements and the diameters of all the bosses. So what we'll do here is as I'm scanning, I'll record the screen on the laptop so that you can get an indication of how this all works. Um, it does take quite a while to get the thousand little data points that we'll require to get a decent scan of this motor. So um, I'll speed it up a little and I'll show you the areas that we'll focus on. All right, so we pick up our scanner now and obviously point it at the motor, at the, uh, the parts that we wanna get data from. Now on the, uh, the middle left of the screen, you'll see the, the blue bar going into pink. This is a distance range of the focal length uh, and you'll need to keep it in that mid range where it's blue to get the best um, surface scan. So once we've got the distance right and we've got a pretty good overall idea of what we're scanning, you'll see those red parts are reflective there in the top right corner and they're not going to get any data because the light cannot be soaked up and the data point cannot be added to that area. I've got my brightness turned down to two, sensitivity on five, scan quality is on normal, and my scan mode is in texture. So we'll get this at the right length, angle it, and then we'll press scan. So now we're starting our scan, and we wanna be basically scanning all of the areas that we wanna pick up on this whilst maintaining the focal length, which on this machine, it's about 400 millimeters. So as you can see, all of the green data there is basically everything that the scan is picking up. And so it will start to build a model on what it's scanning, what has scanned, and then from all of these little data points, it'll, uh, it'll end up creating a texture model that is, that is exported in an OBJ file that you can then use in whatever uh, CAD software that you are working with. So now I'll spend probably the next five minutes moving around this motor and, uh, and gaining all of this CAD data to be able to build this model. You wanna try and keep as much of the scan data in the window as possible. That's all of the green shaded area. Move it around to get a three dimensional profile of that area so that you get the most 
little data dots in there as possible. Now that I've completed these preliminary scans of the front of the VK45 Indy motor, uh, I can bring them into my Fusion 360 model of the S15 chassis or the roll cage, which is essentially my chassis, and I can start work on all of the bits and pieces that are going to mount to the front of the motor and, uh, and create that whole front suspension structure. Um, I've been looking into all of the kinematics, uh, instant centers, center of gravity, and all of the bits and pieces that go along with race car suspension design. So I'm hoping that I can sit down, work on this model, and start mapping all of that out, and start giving you uh, a little bit of knowledge on how I came to the design that I am about to make. Um, before I get into making it. So this whole scanning process has actually been quite easy. Um, these tools are not expensive anymore and they're really uh, applicable to motorsports. A lot of what we do, our scan data doesn't need to be um, perfect because we're essentially getting a geometric model that we can work with in CAD and all of the fixing points we end up doing second measurements on anyway to make sure that the scan data is perfect but the better this scan data is the less measuring you need to do and then you can close the door on the garage sit inside and start building your race car without even getting your hands dirty so that's about it for the scanning for now i will be re-scanning uh, individual parts of this motor and also the areas where the headers are going to bolt on to start packaging that when things get tight in this S15 chassis. But for now, all I really need is the front motor plate and the rear motor plate to start designing my suspension. And speaking of designing suspension, I've just uploaded the Fusion 360 drawing or sketch to engineertoslide.com. That's the S15 project so that you can download that sketch and start playing around with suspension geometry to give you an idea for the changes in upper A-arm and lower A-arm lengths and the effect that that has on camber as the car goes through its travel. So before I head back inside and start working on this suspension design, I just want to send a quick shout out to those companies that have um, put forward their interest in supporting this project in terms of uh, supplying parts. It really does mean a lot. Uh, I put a lot of effort into this stuff, time and money, and, uh, and a little goes a long way in a project like this. Uh, we've just scratched the surface on this one. I'm excited about everything that I'm going to learn in building this car and also all the stuff that I'm going to be able to show you. So thanks for watching and we'll be back here soon with some suspension design.